Hi, it's Teacher Neil again, and today we are going to be learning about vocabulary and sentences you can use in your IELTS test when asked the question, tell us about your family and friends. Yes, today's lesson we will be looking at how you can fully express and describe your feelings about your family and friends. So, let's start with the question if someone asks you, could you please talk to us about your family? So, first word we have is immediate family or a nuclear family. Now, a lot of people do not use the word nuclear family so much. We would rather use the term immediate family. So the immediate family is like the children, your spouse. Your spouse, of course, is your husband or your wife or your parents, or your brothers and your sisters. So, the nuclear immediate family basically means the family that lives together in one house, the closest relatives that you have. Moving on, you could also have an extended family, the extended family being your grandparents or maybe your mother and father's brother and sister, your aunts and your uncles and their children, your cousins. The in-laws is another kind of family. The in-laws means that you married someone and their mother and father and brother and sister now become a part of your family because of the law. When you get married, you sign a paper and that says, by law, your family is together. So we can say my mother-in-law or my sister-in-law. We can also use the term close or distant. A close family means your immediate family or people you often see or a distant relative can either mean that they are very far away or they have the same blood as you but they're not from your grandma or grandpa but further along the lines on the family tree and they kind of separated but you still have the same blood. So you can say, you know, I have a distant cousin living in China that I don't speak to so often. Another useful sentence we can use is on my mother's side or on my father's side. And that just means their side of the family. So you can say one example is I got my eyes from my mother's side of the family. They all have blue eyes. Or you can say, my father's side of the family all come from the mountain areas. My father's side of the family are all fishermen or all hard workers who worked in the mountains. Look at going on. Family is spread out. So what that means is spread out means all over the place. It's not just in one place. You can say, you know what, my family is spread out all over America. I have cousins who live in New York or, and I have some distant cousins who live in Texas. So spread out just means that they are all over, they are not together in the same city. Moving on, it runs in the family. That means it is usually a personality trait or something pertaining to your appearance. So you can say, you know what, your family gets very angry often. Then you can answer and say, well, yes, it runs in the family. On my mother's side of the family, everyone gets annoyed very quickly. But on my father's side of the family, everyone is really relaxed. So I got a little bit of half of each of them. <laughs> Moving on, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. What that means is that you are very similar or the same to your mother or father. Just think about that. The tree is the parent, 
and the apple is the fruit of the tree. So you can say when you describe someone, you know, your son is a lot like you. Then you can say, well, yes, you know, the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. We like the same food. We have the same taste in music. It's very interesting. One more word we can look at is sibling rivalry. Now, if you don't know what a sibling is, a sibling is your brother or your sister. So let me write here, brother or sister. And the word rivalry. Rivalry means that you will compete against each other. You will have competitions to see who is better. So sibling rivalry means that there is a lot of fighting between a brother and a sister or two brothers. So if somebody asks you, tell me about your family. How do you get along with your brother? You can say, well, my brother is my best friend, but growing up, there was a lot of sibling rivalry. We had a lot of fights because we're such different people, you know? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree for my father and my brother, but me, I get a lot of my personality from my mother's side. So we're very different people, and that caused a lot of sibling rivalry when we were young. So, in conclusion, if somebody asks you, tell us about your family, you can use these sentences to really express yourself. For example, people will ask you, are you very close to your family? Then you can say, well, I am very close to my immediate family, but not so close to my extended family. I never really see them. As for my in-laws, I don't really get along with my in-laws. I hate my mother-in-law, but I get along really well with my mother. And I actually have a distant cousin who lives in China and we actually do business with each other. We didn't even know we were related until we looked at the family tree. Moving on, if somebody asks you questions like, are you very similar to your family and friends or very similar to your family, you can say, well, my family is really spread out, you know, we have a lot of different people from different parts of the world, but I am very close to my mother's side of the family. I don't really talk much to my father's side of the family because they're all involved with their own business and they don't really talk to us that much. Now, other questions that you might be asked during your IELTS exam is, what is your approach to parenting? When you raise children, what do you think are, what do you think is very important to teach your children? And how do you think children should be raised? Is there a right way? Is there a wrong way? Well, here are some words that can help you to answer these kinds of questions. Let's take a look. First, we have bring up and upbringing. So that means how do you raise the child? How do you teach the child? How, what values do you give it? Let's look at this one. Instill values for children. The values is what they believe are right or wrong and what you think is important to tell the children. Lying is bad. Fighting is bad. Or some parents will say, I think sometimes children should fight. I think it is good for them to learn how to compete in the business world. So you can use the word upbringing, for example, <sighs> you know, I had a very difficult upbringing when I was young. My father would always hit me when he punished me. So let's take a look at this word, punishment. A punishment means when the child is bad, or misbehaves, the parent will do something to teach the child that that is wrong. So you can hit the child as a punishment or you can ground children. Ground children means that they cannot leave the room or they cannot go out of the house, which is very popular in America. Also, when the children are very young, you can give the child time outs 
which means they must stand in the corner and they cannot talk, they must be quiet, they must think about what they did. So, for example, taking it back to upbringing, you can say, my upbringing wasn't very easy, my father hit me a lot, so when I bring up my kids, I try not to hit my children when I punish them, I give my child time outs or I ground them to teach them a lesson and teach them not to do the things again. Moving on, raise is the same as bring up. Raise is how you teach the child, how you help it to become an adult. The word raise means to go up or lift up. So raise means teach from child to adult in this case. So you can raise your child and another interesting word is the word foster. Foster means that the child is not your child. I'll write here, not your blood. So foster means it's not your child but you still take care of it. So maybe your brother cannot take care of his child so you foster his son or you can adopt a child and foster it and then raise it and give it a good upbringing and teach it good values or instill good values. The values are what they believe, what they think is right and wrong. So if you instill good values in a child, they will be a good person. Or if you teach them to be very aggressive and mean, then you instill bad values to the children. Now, another interesting word we can look at is the word extol. But in English, people don't really use that term so much anymore. But it's still important to know what it means. Extol means to praise your child. And praise means that when they do something good, you let them know that it's great. You can say, oh, great job. Oh, it's so wonderful. Wow, you're so smart. You're so talented. So you can say, when I raise my children, I believe it is important to extol them and to praise them when they do something right because I think that is a good way to instill values for the children. Impose punishments, we have already taken a look at that. And spoiled, spoiled means that you give the child anything it wants, you do not give or impose a lot of punishments, you let the child do anything they want even if they are naughty. So, when you say the child is spoiled, it means it will not listen to you, it will do whatever it wants. So, in conclusion, using sentences with parenting, if somebody asks you, how do you think children should be raised? Or, in your opinion, what should a good parent do? How should a parent raise their children? You can say, well, I think it is important to bring up a child with good values. You should instill the values for the children from a very young age. And what I do, I believe that when a child does something wrong, you should impose punishments. But I don't believe in hitting a child. I think just grounding the child, talking to the child or giving it time out is a good way for the child to learn good values from a young age because I dislike children who are spoiled. Now, we are getting to the part of friends and if somebody asks you, describe your friends, you can use these vocabulary words and also sentences to fully express yourself. Let's take a look. When somebody asks you, describe your friends, you can use words such as close friends. Close friends mean that you are best friends or very close and you can share a lot of your feelings and fears with each other. So you can say, I have a lot of friends but I only have two close friends which I can tell all of my secrets to. 
even stronger than a close friend is a bosom friend. Now the word bosom usually means this part of your body. So think of a mother will hold the baby to her bosom. So that means it is very, very close almost like you grew up together like a brother or someone who grew up at the same time as you and you are as close as brothers. Speaking of which, you can also use this word buddy, sister, brother or bestie to describe your best friend. So as I said, if someone grew up with you and he is your bosom friend, you can say, you know what? John is a bosom friend of mine. He is my brother. It's not your real brother, but it feels just as close as a brother. So you can say, he's my brother or she's my sister. We tell everything and do everything with each other. Buddy is not so close, but it means good friend. You know what? I have some buddies at work and we always have a lot of jokes with each other. Bestie is a cute way of saying your best friend. And usually girls will use that. If you're a guy, maybe don't use that as much. But girls will say, oh my God, I love my bestie. <laughs> Confidant. Confidant. That comes from France. It is actually a French word, but English has used that. And that means the word con. Confide. Confide means you share a secret with someone. So with one of your bosom friends or one of your close friends, you can tell them about personal things and they will be your confidant. So you can say, my best friend is my brother. You know, he's my confidant. When I was having trouble with my wife, I could always confide all of my problems to him. Moving on, fair weather friends. Now that's an interesting word. Fair weather means the weather is nice. So that means that they will only be your friend if the weather is nice. But it's not really the weather, it is you and your life. So if things are going well with you, the fair weather friend will be your friend. But if things are going bad, and you lost your job and you're very sad, the fair weather friend will disappear. So you can say, my friend at work, he's a buddy, but he's a fair weather friend. Whenever I'm not funny, he won't really talk to me. Acquaintance, acquaintance. Now that word means I know him. We talked maybe once or twice, but we are not close friends. He's not really a friend. He's just a guy I know and maybe I've spoken to. Then we have netizen or a net pal. That means you met them on the internet. So netizen means net citizen. So you can say, I have a lot of friends. And I have a lot of netizen buddies that I met on the internet. And you know what? Sometimes I can confide with some netizens easier than I can with my close friends. That's really strange. Moving on. These are words to describe you and your friend's friendship. So if somebody asks you, are you very close to your friends? How close are you? What can you do and cannot do with them? You can say, well, me and my close friends, me and my buddy, we have been through thick and thin together. Now what that means, that is an idiom or an expression. And that means that if a lot of difficult things have happened with you, let's say you lost your job, you lost your money, you and your wife split up and your friend helped you with that and you helped your friend with your problems, with his problems. You can say we have been through thick and thin together. That means the good times 
and the bad times, we always helped each other and supported each other. You can also say, lose touch with someone. What that means is you were close, maybe like a school friend. You can say, at school I was very close to one guy called Richard, but after three years we moved to different cities and we don't talk anymore, you know, we lost touch with each other. That just means you don't really communicate and the friendship is not as strong as it used to be. Moving on, drift apart is very similar to lose touch. Drift apart means that you used to have many things in common, you used to do a lot of things together, but now you went this way and they went that way. So you can say, well, when I was young I had a best friend, but after he got his girlfriend, they started to hang out a lot together and me and him, we, we lost touch and after a while we drifted apart and we didn't really speak anymore. Have a lot in common means that you and your friends like the same things. You and your brother maybe have a lot in common, but that just means he likes what you like, you like what he likes. So you can say, me and my bestie, we have a lot in common. We both like the same music, we both like shopping, we love doing things together with each other. And now, here are some words to describe how you get along with your best friend. If somebody asks you, how well do you get along with them, you can use these words to fully express the emotion that you feel. Let's take a look. Get on like a house on fire. Now, that is also an idiom or an expression, and what that means is you get along so well, you are very close, you have a lot in common, it means basically you are like best friends and you like the same things. So you can say, you know what, my best friend, he's like my brother. We have so much in common, we get on like a house of fire. Every time me and him we're together, there's always a lot of jokes and a lot of laughter. Moving on, get on well with someone. Now that is not as strong as saying we get on like a house on fire. It just means that uh, you like each other's company and you never feel angry or upset with each other. So you can say, I have a co-worker and I get on very well with him. Or you can say, I don't get on well with my brother. You know, we have a lot of arguments, but my sister, I get on very well with her. Moving on, hit it off with someone. Now, hit it off means the first time the two of you meet each other, you feel a connection, you feel an energy, you feel that both of you like talking to each other and like being with each other. So, if somebody asks you, describe your relationship with your friends, you can say, well, the first time I met her, we hit it off. We got on like a house of, on fire with each other. And that concludes our lesson on family and friends for today. So, if you are going to be doing your IELTS speaking exam, you can review this video more and more until you get comfortable with expressing yourself on this topic. And if you like the video, you can take a look at bestmytest.com to see more videos like this to help you fully express yourself and get ready for any test that you have. I'm Teacher Neil and have a good day.